No matter how much you enjoy something, routine can get a little boring in life and the kitchen. But an open mind and an adventuresome spirit can open up a whole new world. Let me share a secret recipe. Discover an ingredient that fires your imagination. Choose other flavors to match. Find the best way to cook them. My secret recipe? Cooking without a recipe. Our friends are coming over later for a barbecue. We'll keep the party outside so the kids can run wild while I get into the thrill of the grill. But I don't feel like banging burgers, so I'm gonna fire up the works, fire up my imagination, and think outside the grill box. Grilling's a great way to add flavor in a hurry, but before I get fired up, I think I'll cool down. Last things first, dessert. These are a great way to finish any barbecue. Something to look forward to after the flames die down. Actually, these are a way to fan the flames. I'm thinking strawberry shortcake. This calls for some biscuits, sweet biscuits. I'll need baking powder, brown sugar, flour, butter, milk, and a spice flavor, because here's where you get to personalize your biscuits with your favorite spice. Pick a spice, any baking spice, cinnamon, ginger, cardamom, star anise, allspice, or nutmeg. Now the first thing you do when you're making shortbread biscuits is preheat the oven to 450 degrees, which is very, very hot, but that's what it's gonna take to make some fluffy biscuits. I will start with two full cups of all-purpose flour. This is really just my grandmother's biscuit recipe with a little bit of sugar mixed in and my favorite spice. I prefer the full flavor of brown sugars, but you could use white sugar if you care to as well. One tablespoon of baking powder will poop these up in no time. A pinch of salt will round out the flavors nicely. And of course, a ton of nutmeg will add personalized flavor. Now my grandmother's biscuits were famous for being tender. One of her secrets was to whisk the dry ingredients together thoroughly before anything wet got added to the bowl. Now another one of my grandmother's secrets was to use frozen butter because she knew that frozen butter was the best way to get butter into the mix, yet at the same time keeping it distinct which is also key to the texture of a biscuit. And then all you have to do is just toss it together quickly like that. It's time to add the milk. Usually three quarters of a cup or so works just fine. Now I learned a lot from grandma, but we didn't see eye to eye on everything. She took a lot of pride in perfect circular biscuits. I, on the other hand, have a more rustic approach, pie wedges. And of course, when you're baking off biscuits in a hot oven, the best way to make sure that the bottoms don't burn is to double up your pan. Now here's a way to add an extra little flavor burst to these. I'll start by brushing a little bit of milk on top of each one, and then I'll sprinkle them with some more sugar, but coarse sugar. And with that oven preheated at 450, these are good to go. I think I'll make a simple, quick rhubarb compote. Then I'll cook it down, thicken it up, almost like a quick jam, and toss the strawberries with it. This is really simple. All you have to do is add a tiny splash of water. Of course, rhubarb's pretty sour, so you might want to add a couple of spoonfuls of sugar. Now this is gonna cook down pretty quickly, so I better get those strawberries ready. Simple, simple. 
This is what's called a compote. It's really just fruit cooked with sugar. And of course, the more I cook it down, the more I'll concentrate the flavor. Now, while these cool down and get to know each other, I better get that grill fired up. Our friends are coming over later for a barbecue so the kids can all play outside. Of course, the big kid is already playing inside. Sometimes the kitchen is a great place to think outside the box, to turn the tried and true into something new, and maybe even have some fun while you're at it. Like a sweet shortcake flavored with your favorite spice, not the cookbook writers and strawberries flavored with rhubarb. A pineapple may not be the first thing you think of when it comes time to grilling, but actually, this is an ideal candidate for the grill because it's got lots of flavor, sweet flavor, and because it's nice and firm. It can handle the rigors of grilling. The key to grilling a pineapple is to cut it into nice thick slices. Normally, pineapple is something that you enjoy at the end of a meal, but as soon as this hits the grill, it's gonna start sucking up lots of savory flavor. It's not gonna taste like dessert anymore, but it will taste like a salad if I add some grilled red onions to it. I think I'll get started on the red onions first. Now that those are fired, I'll oil up the other side. And now that the red onions are out of that bowl, the pineapples are a little bit easier. I'll simply dump some oil right in, add lots of salt and pepper. Now that's the sound of success when you're standing at a grill. Sizzle on! And the second side always cooks faster than the first side. I think they're done. Now these would taste great just the way they are. But that doesn't mean I can't add some more salad flavors to them. Now the best salads, whether they're grilled or not, are full of lots of balance. Balancing colors and balancing flavors. Right now this bowl is full of lots of sweet, so I need to add something sour. These will also add lots of flavor, especially if I take the time to zest them. So let's see. I've got sweet covered, sweet pineapple, sweet onions. I've got sour lemon. I've got salt and pepper. How about something cool? Some cool mint, because every salad needs something green in it. Now this salad is ready to toss, but before I do, I'm gonna chop those pineapples down to size. Now that is without a doubt the most amazing looking salad I've ever seen. Now here's something else that could really use a good grilling. Radicchio. It's an Italian salad green. It's actually purple, but it's thought of as a green, and it's a little bitter too. But once it hits that grill, it's going to mellow out quite nicely. Now the key to grilling greens, or purples for that matter, is to treat them gently, treat them delicately, so they don't fall apart on the grill. 
I'm going to oil each one of these separately. And now some salt and pepper. Now you'll know they're done when they start to soften up a bit. And of course, you'll lose some of that beautiful purple color, but that doesn't matter because you gain it all back in flavor. Now these are ready to go. Now just like that pineapple, Radicchio craves balance too. But unlike that pineapple, Radicchio is a bit bitter, so I'm going to add something sweet to it. And while I'm at it, something sour too, some balsamic vinegar and some honey. Now this has got to be one of the simplest salads I've ever made. It may not be all that colorful, but it sure is going to taste bright and grilled. And speaking of the grill, I still haven't gotten to the main course. Our friends are coming over later for a backyard barbecue, so I'm filling my grill and grilling my fill of flavors. Because in life and the kitchen, thinking outside the box can lead to lots of unexpected flavor. Like strawberry shortcake personalized with your favorite spice, or a salad of grilled pineapple and grilled red onion, or even grilled radicchio with balsamic vinegar and honey. Every now and then around here, it's pizza night. But tonight is grill night, isn't it? Does that mean I can't have pizzas? Nope, because now it's grilled pizza night. Talk about thinking outside the pizza box. I need to get some toppings ready. I'm going to start with a simple flavored oil that I can use to moisturize this pizza dough on the grill. A little bit of olive oil a little bit of oregano, which is the dominant flavor in pizza sauce, and a few cloves of garlic. Oregano garlic oil. Now that's going to add some flavor. Now I've got enough pizza dough to make two different pizzas, so I need two different cheeses. Some feta cheese, and something special, some fresh mozzarella cheese. Check this out. Now, of course, you can use regular mozzarella cheese, but if you want to add a little treat to your pizza, try getting some fresh stuff. Okay, there's my cheeses. Now, of course, I need some tomato. The riper they are, the better. These two are going to get the thin slice treatment. And last but not least, I think some pesto would be nice. And now I'll just cut the dough in half and I'll be ready to start grilling pizza. I love everything about grilled pizza. I love its flavor and I love that it's easy to make. In fact, I find grilled pizza easier to do than baked pizza. Now, unlike a normal pizza where you want to have a nice thick crust on the outside, on a grilled pizza that really doesn't matter. So the idea is just to stretch it out as far as you possibly can, but not so far that you start to rip it. Pros actually like to stretch pizza dough over the back of their hands because it doesn't tear as easily that way. Now before you actually put the dough on the grill, give it a good coating of oil. 
There's nothing like a little garlic and oregano to spark up a pizza. The oil will add lots of flavor, and it'll obviously help keep the dough from sticking, but it also helps it brown evenly. Now the next thing to do is oil the top surface, because in a minute I'm going to flip this over and put the toppings on the bottom. Now see how that's starting to stiffen up? It's not as floppy as it was when it first went on, and it's looking golden brown underneath. It's ready to flip. It looks so good I almost don't want to put toppings on it. But, I guess I will. And I'll start with the pesto. Now another thing to consider when you're grilling pizza, don't put too much topping on it. Because the topping that's going on has got to get heated through, and you just can't heat through thick toppings when you're grilling pizza. Doesn't that look amazing? So at this point, I'm going to turn the barbecue into an oven, and that'll give the cheese a moment or two to melt and for the toppings to heat through. It'll also give me a moment to get the next piece of dough ready. Grilled pizza was actually invented by a few restaurant owners in Providence, Rhode Island, a place called El Forno. They were trying to duplicate the flavor of wood-burning oven-fired pizza. Well, they didn't have a wood-burning oven, but they did have a grill. And one day, some pizza dough fell on the grill. Well, the rest is history. It's amazing what you can do with a good barbecue. So do you really need a barbecue so big that you've got to mortgage your kitchen stove just to afford it? Do knobs, gadgets, and stainless steel really make the food taste better? Well, they don't hurt. But the real question is this, charcoal or gas? When it comes to convenience, nothing beats turning a dial and releasing enough heat to fuel a Formula One race car, especially when five minutes later you're running your own burger joint. But is gas too easy? It's hard to get in touch with your inner caveman when you can't even see the flame. So if the end doesn't justify the means, consider the historical heat of charcoal. Not only does it burn hotter, but it's a whole different experience. It imparts a certain je ne sais quoi smokiness to the food. And besides, with a gas grill, you don't get to show off your primal fire building skills. But then again, what goes up must come down. And a charcoal fire is no exception. It requires constant care and attention. Of course, the best things in life always do. So whether you choose charcoal or gas, choose barbecue. It opens a world of flavors. See why grilled pizza is so popular? And it tastes even better than it looks. Just imagine. Your guests are coming over for what they think is a barbecue. The lid pops open and there sits a grilled pizza. Boy, will they be impressed. Just wait till they see the strawberry shortcake. There's nothing like the heat of a barbecue to get your creative juices flowing. Because the last thing you need to think outside the box is a recipe. Just fill your grill, grill your fill, and see what happens. You just might end up with some barbecued pizza. Tomato and feta, anyone? Or basil pesto and fresh mozzarella? I gotta tell you, that grill really had me fired up today. I made a beautiful grilled pineapple and red onion salad with mint and lemon, and a grilled radicchio salad with honey, balsamic vinegar, and some freshly shaved Parmesan cheese. These are the flavors of Italy right here. And since man does not live by grill alone, I made some dessert too. Strawberry shortcake flavored with my favorite spice, nutmeg, and nothing goes better with strawberries than rhubarb. 
and perhaps a little whipped cream too. Now there's lots of ways to flavor whipped cream, but one of my favorites is a simple liqueur. Of course, you can pick your favorite. Just think of them as liquid spices. Whichever one you like best will taste great in whipped cream. Because the only thing better than grilled pizza is grilled pizza with strawberry rhubarb shortcake with Grand Marnier cream. Let's just say this cream is for the big kids. And I'm sure they're going to love it. You know, if you're looking for a way to add some new jazz pizzazz to your world, look no further than your barbecue. And when you do, you'll find lots of creative flavor possibilities and you'll truly understand the thrill of the grill. <laughs> Abby says, I like grilled pizza. Mm. What do you think of the pineapple? If you did this right on the barbecue. Yeah, totally. So I took the dough for the pizza, mm -hmm. and I brushed it with olive oil, with garlic, and oregano in it. And it was really easy. I actually think it's easier to grill a pizza than to bake it in an oven. No kidding. First time, eh? There's pizza. And she ate all the feta cheese. <laughs> there's a treat over there. Valerie, come see what he's got. Hey, Gabe, there's a treat with strawberries in it. 